Today I want to share with you all about my seven day traditional foods winter menu plan. It's free to download and it's got accompanying videos and printable recipes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Hi, sweet friends. I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest, where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, many of you have been asking me to put together some type of menu plan based on all the traditional foods that we've been learning to cook over the last couple of years. So I've finally gotten around to doing this, and this is going to be for the winter. This is going to have all winter meals in it. And then I'll do a spring, and then a summer, and a fall. Uh, so hopefully we can keep this going, and that you'll feel very comfortable working in all the various traditional foods you've learned how to make into your menu plan, into your seasonal menu plans. So this is a seven day meal plan and it's a winter meal plan and it covers breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And this is perfect for you to put into your kitchen journal. Now, if you've not started making your kitchen journal or starting to put together your kitchen journal, I have a video where I shared mine with you and how to start putting one together for yourself. And I'll be sure to link to that in the iCards and in the description below if you want to watch that video and catch up on what we mean when we're talking about a kitchen journal and the different things that I like to put into it. But definitely menu plans are perfect for your kitchen journal. Now this is 28 pages long and I know some of you are saying, oh my gosh, a menu plan couldn't have just been one or two pages, but I think all of you have been with me for a while and if you've downloaded my 36 page pantry list, you know that I don't do anything in a small way. I'm definitely of the school of thought, uh, bigger is better, or what's the expression, go big or go home? Because whenever I do something like this, I really like to be very thorough. I don't want to just list out, okay, Sunday, here's what you can make for breakfast, this is what you can make for lunch, this is what you can make for dinner. Instead, I like to definitely give you that menu plan, but then make it very clear where you can watch a video on how to make that, that particular recipe, and where you can print out the recipe. I know that many of you are at the very beginning of your traditional foods journey and you're really looking for a lot of information to help you not only learn how to make these traditional foods like bone broth and ferments and sourdough, but to then how to incorporate them into a menu plan, but not just something where I list out, okay, make this, that, and the other thing, but where I tell you, yes, these are the things that you can make to have a complete meal that's made of traditional foods, plus all the various things that you might be able to substitute or tweak a little bit, because I don't want you to ever feel constrained by a menu plan that says, okay, you need to make this, and it has to be this, and it has to be exactly like this. No, what I want to do is give you a lot of flexibility when you're planning your menus, and that's what I've done here. I do give you a very detailed menu plan, plus those menus have links to the videos where I show you how to make these meals, and also where you can print out the recipes for the different foods within the meals. But at the same time, I have a lot of uh, writings so to speak, where I've written in here uh, explaining how you can make substitutions, how you can apply different themes, which we'll talk about in a minute, to different uh, days of the week. If what I've suggested is not perf a perfect fit for your family, because that can really be the case with menu plans. Menu plans can be very rigid, and you may find that there's a particular meal that's not something that your family would enjoy, or that you would enjoy, or that your friends would enjoy, and that you're looking for substitutions or way to tweak these different meal plans or menu plans. And so that is what I've provided here, and that's why it's 28 pages long. Now what I've done here is we start with Sunday and we work our way all the way through Saturday. And I give you a menu plan 
for each day of the week and I assign a theme to each day of the week. And this is based on what we eat in a, in a week. So for example, for Sunday, I start with what I call the mothership meal. And those of you who may be familiar with the chef and cookbook author, Jamie Oliver, he sort of coined that term. And I really like that, ter I really like that term because it is so in it's so descriptive of what I consider the main meal on Sunday. And so I've given you something in this menu plan for Sunday that will create leftovers to help you through the, re through the rest of the week. And then as you work your way through the rest of the menu plan over the next six days, I've applied a theme. In essence, it's something very similar if those of you are familiar with the food nanny, uh, who's a very, very cute uh, woman and she has a couple of cookbooks, I think Food Nanny to the Rescue or some, something to that effect. Uh, but she had the idea of assigning themes to each day of the week. So rather than a hard and set menu plan, although I do give you very specific uh, menus, uh, her concept was to apply a theme. So what I do is say Friday night, you know, in our household is fish night. And so I share with you some ideas uh, for a menu for fish on Friday. Now, I recognize that not everybody may want to eat fish on Friday. So this is where I'm talking about why this is 28 pages long, because I offer suggestions for different themes for Friday night. Maybe you want it to be family favorite night, or maybe you want it to be game night, and maybe you want to make homemade pizza and different things like that. So that's what I, I did in this meal plan. I walk you through what we eat in a week and what our themes are for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But then I offer alternate themes and alternate recipes that may be more to your liking or your family's liking and so on and so forth. So I really see these 28 pages as something that can be very helpful to you if you've strugg struggled with menu planning. And it's something that I really for years struggled with uh, because I didn't like the idea of having things so specific and so set in stone. I wanted something that allowed for more flexibility. And for example, I may have Tuesday night be chicken night. And all I know that I need to do on Monday night is to defrost some type of chicken. I don't know if I'm going to roast a chicken. I don't know if I'm going to make chicken legs or chicken breasts or whatever the case may be. But I know that Monday night I should take something out of my freezer to let it defrost that's in the chicken family. So when Monday night rolls around, I know that at least I've got that defrosted uh, for or Tuesday, whatever, you know, is chicken night. I know that I've got that defrosted and I can go ahead and prepare a meal. But I'm not under pressure to make a particular type of chicken recipe. And that's kind of what I've explained in here. Even though for each night of the week, I've assigned a theme and I have given you specific, a specific menu plan with specific meals planned for each of the three breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and with the recipes for very specific meals. But again, I offer a lot of substitutions to give you flexibility. And I, not only in what you can make under, say, the banner of chicken night, but also I offer substitutions if you don't want chicken night for your theme, if you want meat night or steak night or whatever the case may be. So that's always there for you to help you. And the reason that I went into so much detail with this first uh, menu plan uh, uh, that's going to be in a series of future menu plans. But the reason I went into so much detail in this one is because I really want you to become comfortable with the flexibility of a traditional foods kitchen. I didn't want you to be straddled, so to speak, with the sense that everything needed to be perfect or exact or follow a particular recipe. And those of you who have been with me for a while, you know that most of my recipes also are very flexible, that you uh, can 
make a lot of substitutions and a lot of variations in when you're preparing the recipes that I share. And the reason that I do that is because I know that many people are in different stages moving from a processed foods kitchen to a traditional foods kitchen. You may still be having white flour and white sugar in your kitchen, so I always want to allow for that and give you those substitutions because at least you're making things homemade. You may not have incorporated whole grains into your kitchen yet. You may not have incorporated whole sugars or whole sweeteners into your cooking yet. So that's why I always allow for a lot of flexibility and a lot of substitutions. And that's what you're going to find in this meal plan or menu plan. I always want to say meal plan, but I guess it's both. But I'd really think of it more as a menu because it's a week, you know, it's a daily menu uh, with meals <laughs> planned in each of, of the parts of the menu. Now this is free to download and if you're already on my mailing list and you receive my newsletters, you'll be getting an email shortly that'll provide you the link where you can just go ahead and download this. But if you're not on my mailing list, don't worry. You can head over to my website and I'll have links in the description below. Just open the description under this video and head over to my website. It's the same name as my YouTube channel, Mary's Nest. And there you can sign up for my newsletter and then you'll receive the email and you can download this. And I don't want you to worry, I never inundate people with a lot of emails and I never sell your email. So you never have to worry about that. And the reason I really appreciate you sharing your email with me is actually twofold. On the one hand, I'm so happy that I can be able to send you my newsletter, which is just chock full with a lot of information about traditional foods and traditional cooking. But secondly, it also allows us to stay in touch on a personal level, which is much nicer than just in the big world of social media. And talking about this menu plan, uh, when you download this, be sure to also download my uh, essential traditional foods, what I call four corners uh, pantry list. And that refers to the four corners, the working pantry, uh, the refrigerator, the freezer, and your extended pantry, or what some of us call the prepper pantry. That's a wonderful resource that coordinates beautifully with this menu plan. And the reason is, uh, if you are in the process of making this journey to a traditional foods kitchen, it helps you uh, walk through all of the different things that you want to consider stocking in your traditional foods kitchen. And in that, there is also links to all of the videos that deal with those different foods that are listed in that uh, pantry list. So for example, where I talk about uh, the different types of grains that you may like to stock in your pantry. I also link to videos where I talk about those grains or I show you how to cook those grains or so on and so forth. Uh, so it's a very extensive list uh, that basically covers everything. Now are you going to buy everything and put everything in your pantry? No. Uh, but it, it definitely gives you this wonderful uh, starting point that you then can pick and choose what works best for your kitchen and your pantry. And something I want to stress with both this menu plan and my pantry list, that always just do the best that you can. Don't worry if buying organic or buying pasture raised or whatever the case may be is not in your budget. I always say, you know, stay in the budget. That's the best thing for digestion. And as you move along on this traditional foods journey and you start maybe cutting out prepared foods or processed foods or going to a fast food restaurant and whatnot, and you can start to move money around in your budget where it allows you to maybe buy some eggs that are from a pastured chicken or buy some organic foods, whatever the case may be, that's great but never feel the pressure that you need to do all of this perfectly and never feel the pressure of that, especially when you're in the very beginning of your journey because you want to be a success. And I'm a firm believer that taking the slow, not putting pressure on yourself and just moving through the various steps of learning how to make these traditional foods and now how to incorporate them into week a weekly menu, you will be a success. 
this, this is a process, this is a journey, and this can take a year or more. So never be hard on yourself, never feel pressured. Uh, you know, as I often say, and I even have a video on this, you know, make a roast chicken and go from there. So be sure to head over to my website so you can download this. And in the interim, if you want to learn how to start putting together a kitchen journal, if you've not already done so, be sure to click on this video over here, where I walk you through step by step what I've got in mine and what you may want to put in yours. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.